All right, little Reese. What's up, Brody? Glad to have you back, man. For sure, you already know it's good. Man, we did crazy numbers, man. Uh, you know, made history last time. It was sure. nuts. I see you ain't you ain't you ain't right here with me this time. I know, man. Unfortunately, man, we had to, you know, make it happen virtually this time. But, you know, we we can make it happen either way, man. Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah. Well, I thought we would start with probably the biggest thing you've had going on in your life recently. And that was you recently just got released from jail. Yeah, hell yeah. I was just locked up in Harris County. So you did about, what, nine, ten months or something? Down in nine months. Damn near nine months, man. You know, so, well, you know, what can you tell us about your experience in jail and, you know, every everything you went through and everything? I mean, it wasn't no um, bad experience for me, shit. I don't know. I don't know how to say that shit. <laughs> it was a shit. It was a, it was a nice experience, shit. <laughs> it was a nice experience, though. I got one of my homies who was locked up with me, who I met up in that bitch. He from out here in Houston. I got him in this bitch with me, too. I'm going to let him talk his shit. I'm going to let him tell y'all what was going on in that bitch. Okay, well, let, let me, you addressed something recently in the past few days, man. Uh, Charleston White came out and said that you don't hear from Little Reese no more since he's been locked up. And, you know, he said uh, you was getting handled in jail. So, you know, what, what what's your response to that? Man, that crackhead a liar, man. I don't get handled nowhere. His ass tripping. <laughs> Talking about getting handled. Man, I, tell that nigga knock it up, knock it the fuck off, please. So where do you think he gets this from? You think he just likes to just run off at the mouth and, and say stuff? No, he ain't he ain't never I don't know where he got that shit from. I I think he basically like was on some being funny type shit. Ain't nobody gonna tell him no shit like that. Yeah, he's, you know, he's kind of always going after Chicago guys, man. He's always, you know, cloud chasing. going hard be on cloud, you guys, He be man. cloud you know, chasing on some, on some dick sucking shit. You know, what do you think when you hear him go off on some stuff like that? I don't know. He be funny sometimes when he ain't talking about motherfuckers in my circle. He be funny. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's, uh, let's talk to your homeboy real quick, man. Bob, check it out. My boy from Acres Home, man. Let's get it. What's up, bitch? On the phone now. All right. So, uh, what was your name, man? And can you let them know a little bit about you? My name is Bob. I'm from the back streets. Geek Street. Where's that at? Eggers Home. Dallas area? Nah, Eggers Home, Houston. Houston? Yeah. Okay. Now, and you met Little Reese when you were locked up? Hey, yo. Uh. Okay. And what was going on when you guys were in jail? Shit, we was in that bitch thugging. Shit, I don't, it was thugging. Like, we was in the free world. Okay, you know, uh, Charleston White has some things to say about him. Man, fuck that no. nigga. Yeah, okay. So so the rumors of him getting handled in jail ain't true. Man, that shit ain't true. Every nigga that would play, he got put up. He got you guys got a lot of fights in there? Man, I love to fight. All folks got to do, hey, get them, putting them up. Then the laws, okay. fuck, the laws fuck with us down there, so they were just taking them niggas out. Any nigga wanted to be out, we handled them. Okay. You know what? What is jail like out there, man? I mean, is it is it like a lot of drama all the time, or is it kickback? See, hey man, you got you got some everything. You got chill niggas. You got wanna be niggas. You got gangsters. You got fake gang. You got punks. Hey man, it separate the real from the fake though. You hear me? Yeah. So shit, yeah, when you, you. when your name ring bells, see, you ain't really gotta do too much. Everybody gonna know you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and you said you're from Houston, man. So, well, what did you get locked up for when you were in there? I had three acres shot with a deadly weapon, organized crime, family violence, and evading risk in a uh, motor vehicle. Damn. I just came out on top, though. You hear me? I'm only strong survive, though. Don't I hear that, man. Close your mouth. Mm. Unlike Charles Winston, red ass. Yeah. How do people in jail feel about Charleston White? Man, that nigga a hoe. That nigga work for the laws, man. That nigga work for the laws. Me, I ain't even trying to tweak with him, because I know he on. Yeah. I hear that, man. Well, is there anything else you want to add before we get out of here? Do I want to what? Add? Yeah, is there anything else you want to add before we get out of here? Shit, really, you know what I'm saying? Just come fuck with my bro and shit, you know what I'm saying? Ain't too much. Okay, that's what's up, man. Well, for sure, bro. It sounds like Joe was, uh, you know, pretty active for you in there. Yeah, hell yeah. It was active, though. I ain't going to stunt. It was a lot of shit going on. A lot of fighting. Niggas getting their shit cracked. All type of shit was going on around that bitch. What's it like compared to Chicago? 
I never really been locked up in Chicago like that. So I can't compare Houston to Chicago jail, but I know Houston jail active, like, I don't know. Okay. Well, uh, you know, some big news broke recently, man. You know, um, about a month or so, month or two ago, man, T.I., he, uh, some old video footage surfaced of him, you know, basically admitting to putting a good case on his dead cousin. Damn, I did, fuck with T.I. too. Damn, that shit crazy. I ain't never hear about that. So he did a podcast and he told a story about how uh, you know, I guess he caught a gun case and I guess him and his cousin, his cousin were together during this time his cousin died. And so the, I guess the lawyer said, well, we can make this go away if we say it's your cousins. And I guess that's what he said he did. And, um, yeah, man, what do you think about that? So what? So what? He basically like tricked on his cousin? His dead cousin. Yep. I don't know. That's fucked up. I ain't gonna lie. Shit. So what they say? He a snitch? People have been calling him a snitch, man. Um, Boosie recently did an interview with Vlad just like a day or two ago where he said that he was canceling his joint album with him. Like, they had an album coming out together, and he's like, yeah, I'm not I'm not doing the album no more. Damn, that's fucked up. I ain't never hear about that shit. I got to do some research. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm sure I'm sure there was a lot of news that uh, that went down when you were locked up, man, but... But yeah, that was that was some uh, some of the news that happened, man. For sure. And you know, this made me think of another situation that happened, man. Sean Cotton was doing an interview, and he revealed that you know he has an artist called Spotum Gotham. You know, you know what Spotum Gotham is? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know it. Yeah, he be in Miami. So Spotum Gotham and Little Dirk were supposed to do an album together. I'm not an album. My bad. Not album. A song. They were supposed to do a song together. And Spotum got him, sent little Dirk a hundred grand. Well, during this time, paperwork came out about Spotum got him snitching, basically saying that someone, someone he was with had a gun, and little Dirk sent his hundred grand back. So wait, hold on. I never, I never heard, of, I never heard of that one neither. You say he had a gun, and what happened? So Spotum, so the cops came. I guess they raided a house or something. Yeah. And his homie had a gun. And spot him, and they asked something about his homie, and he was like, yeah, he got the pipe. Damn. So what, Dirk sent his money back? Dirk sent his money back as soon as the paperwork came out. Damn, I got to do, do a lot of research. I got to do some research. I was just locked up like that. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't hear about none of this shit. You ain't hear about none of this? Well, how, how do you feel about that? How I feel? I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a teller teller. I don't do no telling. I take my, take my lick, if anything, so... That's how it is. Like if my homie got a bang on him and 12 find a gun in the car and they put it on me, it's, it's my gun. Shit, I'm finna go down for it. I ain't finna tell. Yeah. People might look at it like, you dumb. Ooh, I'll tell. No, nah, we just different type of people. That's just how I am. That's just how I was raised. Do you feel like it's your homie's responsibility to take responsibility for the gun? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's their responsibility too to step up. But if they put it on me, I'm not finna be like, that's his gun type shit. No, hell no. But it's his responsibility to be like, yeah, that's my shit. You know what I'm saying? If your homie doesn't step up and take the case, uh, do you guys got beef when you get out? No, but I'm going I'm to I'm check his temperature about that shit for, for not speaking up. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, dudes should definitely take responsibility <laughs> for their shit, man. <laughs> you know? Hell yeah. But But I hear you, man. You know? One of the things that's been going on recently, man, is a whole bunch of paperwork been coming out about everybody, man. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, arrest videos and all types of shit, bro. Have you, <laughs> have you checked all that out? No, I've been seeing a lot of little boy shit like that, like going on. Like I just seen some nigga telling on Young Thug now, his ass was checking his paws like he was finna die or something in that bitch. Yeah, did you see that, man? That was, that was why, man, he's super snitched. <laughs> he say super, super snitched. Yeah, his ass a fat rat. Yeah, man, he yo, he offered to set him up, bro. Like he was on some informant shit. He wasn't just on some like giving him information. He's like, I'll help you get the information. That nigga, that nigga checked his paws like he was finna die in that bitch. <laughs> man, bro. Well, what'd you think when you first seen that? 
Shit, I was like, damn, that nigga, he telling it all. Shit. Yeah, Young Thug is looking at quite a bit of time, man. You know, Gunna was also, uh, are you familiar with the Gunna story, how Gunna's also been accused of snitching? Yeah, I was, yeah, I'm familiar with that. I was in jail when I heard that. Yeah, what'd you think? I don't know, man. Shit, I heard shit. He said some shit, too. Shit, took some plea deals and said some shit. Like, shit, they was a gang and all type of shit. Yeah, he admitted that YSL was a gang on the court, man. Um... You know, a lot of people aren't followed Gunner. That's telling, though, shit. They ask me, like, shit, is, what's the name of the game? Hell no, we ain't no game. Yeah. So for people who might not know, man, you know, how, you know, can you break down? Because a lot of people are debating, like, is Gunner snitching? Is he not snitching? And people got, like, their different definitions, man. Can you kind of break down to him? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? What what exactly is, is it when you're when you're snitching? Shit, a men to shit that they asking you. Basically, if if they ask you like, um, is this his gun? Was y'all in a car together? And then he shoot them people, and you be like, yeah, that's snitching. Shit, you a men to what they asking you. Or just giving them any information that they don't have, right? F for sure, hell yeah, that too. Or or, or anything about a crime. Mm hmm. With all the paperwork coming out of Chicago, man, it just seems like more and more people, you know what I'm saying, more and more stuff's going to come out, man. Uh, do you think they got uh, some people scared about the paperwork that's going to be coming out? It's a lot of these niggas out here like 6 9 man. I don't know. They better be scared. Yeah. You know, one thing that also happened when you were gone was G Herbo did an interview with academics. And during this interview, academic, I mean, uh, G Herbo kind of got on academics about the nicknames that he used to give people when he was covering the war in Chirac. Damn, and, I ain't, I ain't see know, that. He, he did? Yeah, 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 he did, man. And, um, you know, he kind of felt like, G Herbo said he felt like, you know, when he was putting these names on people, that they had to live up to these names. And, you know, you were, you were the main name that was brought up during this time, you know. So what How they so what they that, brought man? me up in the interview? I ain't I ain't watched that. I need to go and do some research. Yeah. Do, do you feel like that him putting that nickname on you kind of made you have to live up to that? Hell no, no, hell no. It ain't make me have to live up to that because I was already doing what I was doing in the streets. So by him saying that shit, I really didn't care about that shit. So I really didn't look at it like that. So when he was making these names and everything was going on, man, did you did you feel like it made you an extra target? Yeah, I feel like it made me an extra target, but shit, I really didn't care because I don't care what people say. People talk all the time and say shit all the time, so it really didn't bother me. Mm. Okay, and how do you feel about overall his coverage of the war in Chirac? How I feel about it? I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that shit. Like... That was just some shit he had going on. I really wasn't like paying attention to that shit back then when he was doing all that shit. Ah, see little shit, clips of shit on Twitter and on Instagram. And I really wasn't paying no man. Like I wasn't like, I wasn't really like, I wasn't deep into that shit, like looking at the war in Chirac shit about what he was doing. Mm, okay. Do you look back on that time and be like, you know what I'm saying? Like how, how kind of crazy it was and how how kind of open everything was with the Twitter and the talking and everything? <laughs> no, no, I don't look back on that shit. That shit in the past, you hear me? Yeah. It was a lot of shit going on, though. So it was a lot of real shit going on. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So I think right before you got locked up, uh, Little J had came out. Yeah. And he had mentioned you in his song, and you kind of had some things to say about it. R.E. R.E. was gay or some shit, like, for real. That's what everybody says, you know? That's what everybody who I interview say. They say that, um, you know, he, uh, you know, he did some things when he was in jail, man, with some, uh, with some guys. <laughs> Goddamn, ah, uh, buddy. What'd you think when you first heard the diss? I don't know. I, I was, like, really laughing at the shit. 
His ass a op. Fuck that nigga, man. You guys also had some stuff even back in the day, so you guys kind of always clashed, right? Because he from 63rd. You know, we don't fuck with 63rd. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, <laughs> we not from 63rd. What folks say? 64th and from 65th. We not from 63rd. King Von lyrics. Beating. Well, one of the things that you kind of, uh, you know, kind of had a little bit to say about also before you went to jail was the Cairo situation. Cairo yeah. came out. He did an interview with 16 Shot Him, and, you know, he, he kind of went off on G Herbo. And, you know, I think he said he didn't hold people down. He didn't do some of the things he said he was going to do. You know, you kind of spoke out about it. You know, you know what I'm saying? You kind of said that they shouldn't have brought it to the Internet and that they should have kind of kept it with themselves, man. You know, what, a, you know, what, what do you think about that? Shit, exactly what I said. Like, shit, if that's my man's, I ain't finna bring nothing to the internet about him and let the world know. If that's my homie, I'ma get up with him and I'ma see what's up. I ain't finna do no internet shit and be like, I'm chasing clout. Hell no, I ain't doing that shit. If you my homie, I'ma check you and I'ma get up with you. I ain't finna put it on the internet. That's making the scene like, shit, you want some other shit. So you feel like when it comes to homies, they should keep it off the internet and just keep it in-house. Yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. If, if that's your homie, why bring it to the internet when you could get face-to-face -face with them? When y'all could see each other and you could really talk about it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Do you feel like too many people nowadays go straight to the internet instead yeah. of, like, doing it off the internet? Hell yeah, hell yeah. Niggas be out here, niggas be out here chasing this shit. Is that something you'd had to, you've had to deal with yourself? As far as like me and my homies, no, my homies, my homies, a little older and they know better, so they don't do no internet shit. Mm. Not long after our last interview, mm -hmm. I seen a video. I think I think you were on live, and you were in an Uber, and they were bumping some music that you did not like. Who shit they was? You bumping, remember man? that? It was an op or something. It had to been the op. Yeah, yeah. Do you you remember that? Oh no, I kind of remember that shit. But then, yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. I probably told him like, man, turn that shit off. No, yeah. I want I want I wanted no Uber. I was in a car with one of my homies, and like you know, I, if you be on YouTube, shit, I automatically play. Some automatically play, and I told him like, man, change that shit, cause I ain't want to hear that nigga shit. Uh, okay, that's what was even my next question. I was going to say, do you think they were just trolling you or was it just nah. like, you know? Hell no. Nah. I was in the car with my homie. He was on YouTube. And, and when you when you on YouTube, shit automatically played. So some shit automatically played. And I just told my homie to turn that shit. That's what it was. Well, you know, bro, uh, right after our last interview, you know, you, you uh, had a situation where you ended up getting shot again. Damn, that was? Yeah, I think it was like, I want to say a month or two after our last interview. When I got, I got skint in the eye and I got skint in the mouth at that time. Yeah, can you kind of take me through what happened that day? Yeah, like, my homie them, um, I guess they had did some hot shit. And they pulled up on me, was selling me some weed. And shit, I was trying to get some weed and shit. And that's when the little shit had popped off. Okay, and I think you started to run downstairs or, or yeah. run outside? Yeah, 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 yeah. After the shootout and shit that went on, like, I had, um, got up out the car, and I was, like, getting up out of the, running, running out and shit. And the police had came and hit me from the side and knocked me down and put me in cuffs and shit and had me on the floor. Yeah, man, I remember seeing the video. I was like, oh, shit, these fucking cops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The police knocked me down and shit. I had got skint in the mouth and skint in the eye. That's why I was bleeding like that on the ground. Where about in your eye did you get grazed? Like this one. And, and this one right here. No, in this eye right here, I got like a, I got like a, a gash. It's like a, a knot in the, on the side of my eye. If you really look at my eye. Damn, bro, man. And, and were you in the hospital at all? Did you go to the hospital? I just went to like get checked, get checked out and shit, and they let me right go same day. 
you know, now that you've been through two of these wild situations, you know, you got the, the neck and, you know, grazed right in the face. I mean, you know, how are you taking your safety? Are you are you moving more safe or, you know what I'm saying, is there anything that you could have prevented? Yeah, I'm moving a little, little, little better. I ain't doing what I used to be doing, all that hot shit. Just moving a little different, that's all I'm doing. Yeah, I hear that, man. What was the rumors about you stealing a car? I, I know Reese didn't steal no car. No, nah, hell no. Nah. I wasn't stealing no car. I was buying some weed. That's all I was doing. I ain't okay. know the car was stolen. I ain't know the car was stolen no shit like that. Okay. Your voice. How's your voice coming? I mean, I feel like it's, it's getting a little better. It's better than what it was. I could say that. I could talk a little louder. I could speak a little louder. Yeah, it's a huge difference since our last interview. Mm -hmm. Huge. Yeah, hell yeah. Definitely, I feel like man. as time go on, it's going to get stronger. So. Do they got you, like, taking any classes or doing hell anything no. to, like, rehabilitate no, I never took, no, I never took no classes or nothing for my voice. Were you supposed to? Yeah, I supposed to have got surgery and all type of shit, but I didn't do nothing. Mm. Do, you, do you like it better when you rap? Do you think it, it adds to your... You're rapping, or do you think it takes away? Yeah, I think I think I I, I like I like I like it because it's different. Like I don't want to be sounding like back then. I feel like I got a different flow nowadays, so I'm gonna just run with it and make it happen. You got any music coming up? Yeah, I got some shit coming out. I'm finna drop another um, album, and then in the summertime I'm gonna drop some. I got a few videos on the way. I got a documentary on the way. You got a documentary on the way, okay? Yeah, yeah, What's yeah. uh, you know, what can you tell us about that? I mean, it's coming soon. Just be looking out for my documentary. Like it's gonna be like your life story? Um, something like that. I'm gonna be talking about a lot of shit. Not too long ago, NBA Young Boy and Dirk were kind of going back and forth through the songs, and you kind of jumped in and had some things to say about it, you know. Uh, I believe you said, you know, that ain't no demon time. He just rapping like the rest of these rappers. All rap. Oh, hell yeah. If you're talking about my people, hell yeah, I'm going to say something about that shit. What do you, what'd you think when you first heard the diss track? His ass tripping. He tweaking. Do you feel like that, you know what I'm saying, the, the dissing and everything is going to keep going on for a while? I don't know, shit. I ain't been hearing shit lately, so I don't know. Yeah, it, ha it has been a little bit quiet with the... Uh, with it, with the NBA and, and everybody, man. Um, do you feel like that the songs make things worse or do you think they kind of like relieve some tension? I don't know, bro. I don't do no dissing. I ain't gonna lie. I don't, I don't do no dissing. I'm trying to get out with a nigga. You don't do no dissing in your music. Okay, that's... Ne never have? I'd be like, I'm smoking toque and shit. You know what I mean? I ain't, I ain't finna diss no nigga. Mm. Okay. Now, you said you don't do no dissing. Is is that just something you've always just kind of wanted to stay away from? No, no. I feel like I ain't finna tell nobody what's going on if I'm really on you, if I'm really trying to get you. That's how I feel. Mm. Okay. Do you feel like there's a, a too much dissing in hip-hop nowadays, or do you feel like it's like still good for entertainment? I mean, that's entertainment at the end of the day, and that's what people, certain people do. So however they do it, that's just how they do it. I don't blame them shit. That's just not what I do. Yeah. There's, you know, I mean, hip-hop was kind of built off of diss tracks. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Battling and, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like, you know what I'm saying, keeping that. But, you know, it seems like today, you know, today's rappers, it's like, it's a little more serious. Hell yeah, it is. I ain't gonna lie. Niggas be dissing people. Niggas be dissing niggas. Dead homies. Niggas be trying to catch their ass. Do you feel like that that the dissing of the dead kind of makes the beefs worse, or does you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, it's gonna make the beef worse. Cause niggas gonna be like, man, I'm trying to get his ass. He just said, "Fuck my homie on the song." He just put my homie on the song. Man, I can't wait to catch his ass. We gonna put him on the song. You know, this was kind of tied into that uh, young boy and Dirk dissing. Young boy did a video shoot, and I guess he did it at his house. Mm -hmm. And a fan, 
I guess DM Dirk, he took a screenshot of it and said he wanted uh, $250,000 for Young Boy's location. That was true? I seen the screenshot, so I believe it was true. Damn. How do you feel about the fans being that involved in the beef? Shit, the fans trying to get them that reward. If it's a reward on the motherfucker, the fans gonna try to get it. Mm. Think the fans are getting too much involved in it, or? I mean, that's that's what they do. That's what that's what they that's what they fans for. Okay. <laughs> I think I think fans get a little too carried away myself. Yeah, yeah, they get a little too carried away. Man, they need to man their business sometimes, but that's they fans. That's what they do. So how could you blame them? They they get real involved, man. They they you know start acting like. Uh, their favorite rappers' ops or their ops. Mm-hmm. Let me see. That'd be, let me, that'd let me be get, kind of a trip, man. Let me give Kyrie a kiss. What up, little girl? Hey, you don't you give me your kiss? You want to look at the... Give me a kiss? Ching chong? All right. So, also, when you were gone... Swag De Niro did a interview with Sean Cotton. Yeah. And did you during the? I don't know. You probably heard about this. I don't know if you did though. But during this interview, he challenged you to a one-on-one -on -one fight. He from the suburbs. I will beat that little boy ass. I ain't even gonna lie. He ain't even. He from the birds, man. That nigga ain't even from Chicago. He ain't even from the city. His ass from. Motherfucking um. What what birds, man? What birds can I say? His ass from. From Glenwood somewhere in Chicago. Nigga, fucking goofy. Nigga, so nigga. he didn't grow up in Chicago? He didn't, he, he didn't grow up in your area or Hell nothing? Hell no, he ain't grow up in the area. He ain't from the hood. He not from here. White boy. He ain't from the hood. Mm. What, how, what'd you think when you first heard that? Like, damn, he's still mad about his brother and them. Like, man, fuck them niggas. Like, shit, he mad about his brother dying and shit. I ain't got nothing to do with that shit. Fuck his brother. Are you surprised that he's still kind of calling you out after all these years? I ain't surprised. I mean, shit, he he just a, he just one of them type of niggas. That's that's what it is. Fuck dude, though. Swag De Niro, his ass a goofy. Slap the fuck out that little boy I ever seen him. You know, speaking of his brother, man, you know, he made the whole BDK song. You know, what was your reaction when you first heard the song? Shit, I was like, shit, he gonna have some problems coming his way. Mm. Was it was like a lot of people mad? Like a lot, a lot of BDs mad about that? Hell yeah! You saying BDK and you in a city full of BDs? You don't think they gonna be mad? Like safe as this. If you was a gang or something, and you diss a whole nation, you don't think the whole nation gonna be mad at you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now when that happened, man, I heard that like, it was like a lot of people really fucked with the song, man. Did you guys see that a lot? No, hell no, because where I was from, it ain't number BDs. So ain't no BDs finna be playing that shit. Did you ever run across anybody bumping it down the street or anything? Hell no. <laughs> BD. <laughs> BD. <laughs> this right here was a little surprising to people when it came out. I don't know if you heard about this either. You might not have heard about this, but uh, a few months ago, a song came out that NBA Youngboy put out that was actually produced by Chief Keef. And that came out in October. And the song was called All the Problems. Mm-hmm. Sosa fuck with who he fuck with. So, man, Sosa don't fuck with the same people. So, that's my homie. My homie got his own gas, and I got my own gas. So, that's just how it is. Yeah. Were you surprised when you heard that? No, I wasn't surprised. I wasn't mad or nothing. I ain't, I ain't never even hit a shit. I ain't. I don't be listening to them type of niggas. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, were surprised when they heard about it, man. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, Being yeah. that everything was going on, but, you know. So, so fuck yeah, with him, I guess. I don't know. I fuck All with right, Vaughn. Yeah. I fuck with Vaughn. So, so fuck with him. I fuck with Vaughn, so. I fuck with Vaughn. Vaughn, my man's man. Vaughn from the same hood, so. I ain't going against nobody who Vaughn don't fuck with. Well, I, I seen a video recently come out that you, when you were back in Lamron. 
Yeah. What was that like? She had one number love. It's always love when I go to my hood. I can go to that bitch, everybody gonna pop out, pull up on me. What's up, what you on? Let's do it. And, you know, you get out of jail and not long and you're right back in, you know, you're in the streets, bro. You know what I'm saying? Are you feeling like, you know, you're getting out, you're getting older now. Yeah, for you sure. Know? No, I just, I just wanted to go show some love to my people. I wasn't really like on the block block. Just had a little sheen dig going on. Had my people to pull up. Had a little savage party, a little gangster party. Okay. You know, what do you think was like your wildest times growing up on Lamron? My wildest time? Shit, like, when a nigga was coming through the block one time, like, I was on the block. Me and my homie know was on the block. And like, I was how I was standing, you could see the alley. In Chicago, we got alleys and shit. How I was standing, you could see the alley. And I seen a nigga creeping through the alley. So my homie in the car with a bitch, like, right in front of me. So I see the nigga creeping in the alley. So he raised up. And I'm pointing, I'm telling my homie, and I'm like, on that nigga, on that nigga. He get to shooting. My homie hop out the car and end up getting, sh getting shot, like, like skint in the back. But he was directly in the same area we was at. But to make a long story short, I seen the nigga creeping in the alley. And everybody turned out to be okay? Your homeboy is good? Yeah, he was good. He had ran himself to the hospital. Mm, okay. A little history on your hood, man. I think everybody knows, you know what I'm saying, normal turned into Lamron, but, you know, where did that actually come from? Like, who thought of that? See, one of the guys, we was on the block, they probably was high and they was reading the sign and they just spelt our block where we was from backwards and came up with Lamron and that's how we got Lamron and we put 300 with it and it was Lamron 300. Where's the 300 come from? Shit, we, we, we been saying 300. It ain't come from no movie or shit. So, I don't know. That shit just the guys made up. And we ran with it. You know, like, when did your, what year did you guys' hood start? Do you know? This happened, this, this been going on for a minute. 07, 06, 05 type shit. A long time. At, at what point did you, did you get involved? <laughs> shit, I don't know. I've I, I been, um, I could say basically, I've been around all my life. That's where I grew up at. Yeah, I think you were telling me about, you know, the Cayenne Met buildings and everything. Mm, yeah, I'm from the projects. That's the project, the Cayenne Met building. So the buildings went down and that's when kind of when everybody split up and yeah. kind of went their own ways? Hell yeah, when the building went down, when the building two down, I went to Lamaron. That's where I went. Okay. Okay, right. I think you mentioned your mom. Yeah, hell yeah. In our last interview. Buildings two down in 03, 2003. And shit, we okay. moved over there on Lamaron 300. That's where we moved to. And that's what, that's what happened there. Now, I don't know if you've seen this. Uh, are you familiar with DJU? Hell no. Who is that? DJU, he's a, he's a new guy uh, doing a lot of drill interviews out of Chicago. I believe he was King Von's old DJ. Yeah, DJU. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know who that is. I have to do some research when I get done with this interview. Okay. but he, <laughs> so yeah, you, I don't know. You're probably not going to know what I'm talking about, but he did an interview or, or he's interviewing somebody. And he had mentioned, he was like, yeah, when I was a kid, Little Reese stole my oh, bike. Oh, I seen that shit. I probably did take his bike. I used to take niggas' bikes back then. I did used to do that shit. How, how many was that like, you know, what was going on back then? You know what I'm saying? We used to, all them niggas from 63rd, we used to go down on their block and beat them up and take their bikes. Real shit. Catch them on the bus, up guns on them and shit. We used to touching them boys. We used to take them Even at that young? Bike. Yeah, hell yeah. We used to go through their shit, take their bikes and shit. That's how I started, really. Taking their bikes and beating them up and shit. Damn. Who all was with you guys at the time? Like, like you know what I'm saying? Anybody we would know about that was out there with you? Mm, Fredo was out there with us. Vaughn was out there. T-Roy was out there. A lot of niggas was out there. That's, that's still around, basically. T-Roy was from the uh, the Kayumet buildings also? No, he was from, T-Roy was from O Block, which was across the street from the Kayumet buildings. Like, it was two projects next to each other. It was the Kayumet building and it was O Block, Parkway. That's that's how it was. We used to be fighting Parkway back then when we was kids, taking bikes and shit. That's how it used to go on. We used to take bikes and shit back then. 
walk around, take people bikes and beat them up and shit. Okay, so now, you know, you guys get older, you guys start rapping. You know, how does Glory Boys come together? It was some shit, um, Sosa and made back then, like some Glory Boy shit. This was some shit. So this, this was Sosa idea. Sosa made Glory Boys and he was my homie. So I was like, shit, I'm rocking with you. That's what it is. That's what we rap. That's what we rocking. That's what we saying. That's what's up. And that was you, Fredo, Fredo and Chief Keith, right? Yeah, me, Fredo and Sosa, yup. Yeah. Was there anybody else or was there ever going to be more people? I mean, we the ones who invented that shit, really, who, who made it what it was. What's like some of your favorite times from like from back then? Hanging out with you, Fredo, Chief Keith, you know what I'm saying? This was like the, my, my favorite the beginning time with Fredo, of the drill era. My favorite time I had with Fredo, like I was, I was at his house one time in California. The nigga had like, like two or three bitches in the bed with him. It's like five in the morning. I creep in the room. I see him with all them hoes in the bed with him. I creep in the room. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, what's up? I'm like, let me, let me get in. Let me get in. He, come on. <laughs> he, come on. Hop in. I jump right in that bitch. Give me a bitch. Now I'm on the side of him. We both side to side with the hoes. Okay. On some gang yeah, shit. On some sure. real, on some real gang shit. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. You know, what about Chief Keith, man? Do you got anything about Chief Keith from, from the past that you could share? Yeah, hell yeah. I got a lot of I got a lot of little shit with him too. How could I how could I say like I remember one time like when we first like started getting our deals and shit, I pulled up with a SRT. This is like 2012. I pulled up with a 2012 SRT. He like, man, how the fuck you get that car? Woo! Next thing I know, he pulled up with a SRT. Shit like that we was doing. Is Chief Keith real competitive? He used to be, but I don't know if he's still like that. Like, you know how that shit go. He used to be like that, but I don't know if he's still like that, really. Yeah. Well, that, that probably fueled him to be like, you know, a really good rapper to always be, you know what I'm saying? Hell to yeah, try to that, be the best. Yeah, hell yeah, that, that, that definitely did, because he really looked up to me and Fred on them. So when we did shit, he was like, oh, I got to do, do this that way and do this that way. To be like them type shit. Hell yeah, he looked up to us. Do you feel like, you know what I'm saying, like his, his movement with the drill and everything, man, it's kind of just, you know, paved the whole way, man, for a lot oh, of yeah, people. Did. A lot of yeah, people to hell get yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, did. You heard what he said in his interview shit. He said he the godfather or something, didn't he? Godfather of drill. Yeah, that's my boy. That's what it is. That's what he said. That's what he is. Mm. So you agree with that, man? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I ain't gonna disagree with him. That's my man's. That's what he said. That's what. That's how we rocking. That's what it is, man. You know, Chief's impact is undeniable. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? To is. keep it 100, man. You know, he changed music. You know, I remember when it came out, man. It was, you know, he came out during a time when it, when not a lot of people were being too different. You know, and he kind of came out and made his own lane. For sure. You know, during this drill, you know what I'm saying, it kind of sparked a lot of beef, man. Is is there any time where you notice, like, you know, that the beef with the drill and everything is kind of heating up or, you know what I'm saying, is there any particular moment where you kind of notice that things have changed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or got yeah. worse? Because it was like, we was coming from the streets, going straight to the studio, and that's how the, that's how the music was coming about. So you guys were just making music kind of just reflecting on your day-to-day -day life in the streets. Yeah, hell yeah, really, basically. And at any point, did you notice that things are changing? Yeah, hell yeah. Shit, shit got to changing when, when, when Sosa blew up. Did you go on tour with him back then? Yeah, hell yeah, I went on tour with him. What was it like back then? You guys had a lot of good times? Yeah, we had a lot of good times. We did a lot of traveling and shit. Performed and shit. I remember one time we was performing in front of Rihanna, Chris Brown, and all type of other big names. That's crazy. What we got? What was the performance for? It was some like um, Pink Dolphin, some some Pink Dolphin shit. You remember that clothing? I do. I do remember them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was like yeah. a performance for them we had going on, and it was like Rihanna, Chris Brown, all type of people there watching us perform and shit. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard Chief Keith doesn't care about features, and he doesn't care about working with big names. 
that. No, that's true. He really don't care. He arrogant, so he be stuck in his ways. He don't really be going out his way too much to try to work with other artists. Like how, how artists be nowadays going out their way, like doing a lot of dick sucking and all type of shit. He ain't like that. He ain't finna be around niggas and trying to rap with niggas. What happened with that whole 50 Cent situation and him not showing up to the video shoot? Shit, he probably was busy. He probably was doing something. Sosa doing Sosa. Sosa was on some Sosa shit. That's, I mean, that's a big name to not be showing up to, though. You know what I'm saying? That's Yeah. Yeah, that's a big shit. name. Yeah, hell yeah, that's you a big know? name. But shit, That's a big I mean, opportunity, too, you know? Yeah, I mean, shit, Sosa don't care. For sure, man. Well, you know, I always see rumors about dudes having ops that are relatives. Mm -hmm. And I've seen some rumors about you having some relatives that are ops. Is there anybody out there that, that are your cousins? Not, not at the moment. My cousin used to be GD, used to be hanging with the ops and shit. But my cousin don't hang with them niggas and shit no more. So it's like, my cousin really ain't no op no more. But he, but back then, I could say like, if I was to like be like, yeah, yeah, my cousin was an op back then when we was on their ass. How do you kind of handle like, you know, seeing him like at a family function or something? No, it ain't number love. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't no love loss. Not right now. Back then it probably would have been some heated moments, but it ain't like that no more. I, I seen rumors that J-Man and P. Rico were your cousins. Hell no, nah, them niggas ain't my cousin. But you knew J-Man from the Kaya Met buildings? Yeah, I, yeah, I grew up with that nigga. He used to slap him around. I grew up with him. Like, his daddy know my daddy type shit. His daddy used to be with my daddy. My daddy used to beat his daddy up type shit. Yeah, they say your guys' dads used to, like, they, they was tight and they were, like, important in the building, I guess? Or? Yeah, they used to be fighting and shit, fighting each other and shit. Jump, jumping niggas. It'll be his guys jumping on my daddy and them, my daddy and them, jumping on his daddy and them. That's how that shit used to go back then in the Kaye Med building. What was it like for you growing up and, you know, being in the middle of everything, man? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I assume it heavily influenced your life. Yeah, hell yeah. I don't know. I was a... Watcher, I, I, I took heed on like watching, watching, watching anything that was going on. I never was doing everything that they was doing, but I still seen what was going on, so I knew about it. You know, growing up and, and seeing all this stuff, man. You know, you know, do you feel like it kind of, you know, pushed you into the streets a little bit harder than what it would have been? Yeah, hell yeah, like that shit influenced a lot. If I probably would have never been around that type of shit, if I would have been around the right shit, I would have went the right way. I seen you recently did an interview. Yeah. And in this interview, you said you would have liked to have done a collab album with King Vaughn. Yeah, for sure. That would have been crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to do some shit with him. We got a song that I didn't release yet, really. But I'm going to release it this year. Okay. And, and how many songs do you guys have together? We got one song, but he sent me a song that I never got on. But he ended up putting it out. Well, they ended up putting it out. Some people, whoever had his music, ended up putting it out. So I never did. Oh, okay. And, you know, how do you feel about everything that's been coming out? of You know, he's been a lot of crimes have been put on Vaughn since he's passed away. He innocent, man. He's innocent. Yeah. Okay. That's a good way to put it. And, you know... What do you think is like, you know, your 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 best memory hanging out with Vaughn growing up? I don't know. We had a lot of memories. I could say one 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 memory shit was like we was in the hood and my little and my homie Scuttle's son had um put a little fake gun up to my head and Vaughn was like, don't shoot his ass, little folks, don't shoot him. Some shit like that. Yeah, yeah, I remember that, man. Hell yeah. But we, used to, we but we got a lot of well, memories though. We uh, we was always in the hood together and shit. Yeah, you you hung out in O Block a lot. Yeah, that's where I'm from. That's where I'm from, really, across the street from O Block. So when I was little, I used to walk over there to O Block all the time. So I still be over there. That's how I go. Oh, I see. So that's how you kind of got close with everybody, even at a young age, even though. You yeah, guys I used to be. Different. I used to be with OD, the, the person who they named O Block after. That's who I used to be with. OD, me and OD, them used to run around. Can you share anything about OD? Shit, folks was really like that. I ain't gonna lie. 
OD had everybody scared. He used to be whooping niggas ass around that bitch. And I used to be fighting one of them type of shorties who was always fighting everybody. So me and him really like came together on some shit. We like, we alike type shit. So we got to hanging out. I was from the Kite Man building. He was from O Block. I got to spend the night at OD crib and shit, being at O Block. And that's how I was out there. Man, how, how did that affect you when he passed away? Shit, it affected a lot. He died in like 2011. Shit, that shit made everybody who they is right now to this day. Did a lot of things change when he passed away? Yeah, a lot of things changed. Hell yeah, a lot of a lot of shit changed. Like what what were some things that you noticed? Shit, people started doing different shit. Like a lot of people started shooting guns and shit. So that's how shit changed. You know, before we get out of here, you know, I was hoping you could share a couple stories. Uh, you know, your history in the drill community and the drill movement, man, has been, you know, it's been extensive, man, real important, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, legendary records, you know what I'm saying, that you've been on and been a part of, man. So, you know, if there's anything you could share, man, that, that would just be dope. Yeah, I mean, I got I got some shit I could share, like, with me and Fredo and Sosa and Dirk and all us. I mean, shit, we really came up from nothing, bro. Like. We used to sleep in the basement together in the studio and make music. And that's how everything came about. Now, sleeping in the studio, man, you know what I'm saying? Are you guys just taking turns getting on the mic? You know what I'm saying? Like, how many days straight would you say you guys grinded it out in the studio? Months. We was in the studio months. for months. We stayed We stayed in that. We, we made that our house. Man, okay. And do you feel like that that was like the time when like, you know what I'm saying, everybody really started to develop their skills and- Yeah, hell yeah, you know hell what I'm saying? yeah it was. Hell yeah, it was the time everybody started developing their they skills and shit and started mastering their craft and shit. What made you guys want to take it so serious? Like what, what was the motivation? The motivation was for me, I, cause I used to tell like, we was in the studio one time, me, Fredo and Sosa, all of us, and I told them, like, man, come on, I'm finna leave. I'm finna go on the block. This shit ain't doing shit for us. This shit ain't working. Fuck this shit. Sosa, I mean, Fredo was like, man, hell no, I'm finna record right fast. Sosa was in there already recording. So I, next thing you know, I didn't leave. I stayed in the booth with him, because I'm like, man, I'm tripping. I ain't finna go on the block. It's already, it's hot to see a police probably outside. I ain't finna go on the block. I'm finna just stay in the studio. And made some music, and that shit blew up. The same music that blew up was the music I was finna leave out in the studio on. Mm. What was like your, was that the first the first time you got some money from rap? Um, No, but it was the first time I did the music that got the money off the shit for rap. Okay. Was that kind of like a motivator for you? Like, Hell okay, yeah. shit, Hell this yeah shit could was. work. Hell yeah, it was. That's how I was looking like, oh yeah, this shit do work. I'm finna, I'm finna do this shit. This is exactly what I want to do. What'd you spend your first big check on? Cars, buying cars and buying my homies and buying everybody's stuff and giving my mama money and just doing everything I couldn't do before I had the money. What do you think was like your worst purchase? Like your worst waste of money? <laughs> buying a car, I spent like 50,000 on a car and got it took. I bought like it took. I bought like yeah. I bought no. Matter of fact, I crashed it. The same day I bought a car, I crashed it. Spent like fifty thousand. Didn't get no insurance or nothing on the car, and crashed the car. Totaled it. Damn. Damn, that's fucked. Mhm. Mm Man. Okay. But you guys had you guys was getting bags back then. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure you still are now today. I'm just saying, for you, you guys were young, man. So you was like, yeah, it was, it was, it was kind of different. Like, like nowadays when we get the money, it ain't new to us. So it's like, okay, it don't excite us like that no more. Back then when we was getting that money, it was exciting. Plus, you was young. That's what I mean, I'm saying. How old were you? Like 19, 16, 18. 17. I was like 19, 18 at the time. Sosa was like 16, 15. Fredo was like 18, 19. Fredo was like 20, 21. Matter of fact. Man. I was like 18 See, at the time. You guys are getting all this money. You're buying new cars. 
you know, was it like a, like how big was the shock of everything? Shit, it was big as hell. I, I wasn't used to that shit. I was just really poor. I ain't really had nothing. I couldn't take care of myself. And then from from not being able to take, your, take care of yourself to being able to take care of yourself and do what you want to do, that shit will change you. You will be like, damn. Did it make you want to like stay out of trouble a lot more? No, I ain't gonna say that. That shit made, <laughs> what? Getting money, that shit made me want to do more shit. I'm like, what? I'm outside. I'm finna buy a lot of guns. I'm finna do this. I'm finna do that. Mm. Uh, you know, you mentioned uh, being in the studio with Little Dirk. You know, I don't really hear a lot of stories about Little Dirk. You know, it's, it's not a lot of people out there really, you know, that share a lot, you know? Is there any, any stories or anything you guys been through that you could share? Yeah, hell yeah, man. Dirk been through some shit. Like one time he was on the block. And I had left the barbershop. I was just shooting dice, a nigga won all my money. I came back on the block. I couldn't get all the other guys because I knew they wasn't gonna want to do it with me. So I told Dirk, like, come on, come with me, grab a gun. He asked, like, what we finna do? I ain't telling him what we was finna do. So when we got to the barbershop, I made him rob this nigga. And we took my money back that I had lost in the dice game. And then that same nigga we robbed ended up telling one of the big guys, tricking on us and shit. So we had to get his money back and they were trying to violate us and shit. But we weren't going for that shit. But I had tricked Dirk into robbing somebody with me. Do a lot of dice games go down like that in Chicago? No, hell no. Hell no. That's what, this was back then. I mean, only only reason why I went down like that because it was me. I was on that shit. When you said you almost got violated, what do you mean? Like the older the older guys almost, almost got mad at you? Yeah, the older guys was trying to put my homies on me to make them whoop me and shit, but my homies weren't going for that shit. My homies weren't finna touch me. So kind of like a, a discipline, but yeah. th it didn't happen. You guys yeah, just kind of yeah. yeah, yeah, gave no. it back and everything was cool. Yeah, hell yeah, my homies weren't going for that shit. And plus, I wasn't going. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't honoring that shit. Is that the wildest dice game you've been in? One of them. That was one of the wildest dice games that, that happened. Hell yeah. Well, what are some stuff, what's some wild things that go on at the dice game in Chicago? Niggas be losing a lot of money. That's about it. Shit, niggas, I done lost 50000 at a dice game before. 50000 at the dice game. Damn. <laughs> Shit, man. Was you was this like, you know, uh, when you first started getting money or? No, hell no. This happened like like, like, like three years ago, four years ago. I lost 50000 at Miami shooting dice. Hmm. Man, how much how much have you won? Oh shit. I won the most I won was like two hundred and fifty thousand one time. Two hundred and fifty thousand shooting dice. Yeah. How long did it take how long was the dice game going for? I mean, I was fucking them up from like ten in the morning to like six in the mor six in the morning at night. So I was going for like, man, like 18, 19 hours, fucking them up. Fucked them up up for like two fifty. How many people were playing? Just me and him. It was a one-on-one. -on -one. Just one-on-one? -on -one. Yeah, I ain't going to say who it was, but it was a one-on-one. -on -one. Is he like a famous rapper or somebody we know? No, hell no. This was back then. Um, Somebody, um, manager. Oh, damn. A quarter mil. That's not a bad night. What'd you do with the money? Did you party? Fucked it up. <laughs> 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 Fuck that money up. <laughs> Hell yeah, that, that's like some that's like some free money right there, man. Yeah, yeah, I fucked that money up. Well, Reese, man, I appreciate you, bro. For sure, bro. I appreciate you too. Yeah, man. Uh, you know your story's dope, man. You know, like I said before, man, your impact on drills crazy, man. You know. For sure. Is there anything you got coming up you want to let them know about? Yeah, I got I got like um an album on the way. I got a little documentary I've been working on. I've been in the studio lately. Been home like a month almost now. So I'm really just trying to better myself at the moment. So I can't go back. That's what it is, man. It was definitely a little more quiet out of the drill scene when Reese was gone. That's for, for sure. sure. For sure. All right, bro. Take care, man. I love broski. You already know what time it is, man. Whenever you ready to do another interview, I'm rocking with you. We could do 10 more. All right, man. Sounds good, man. I'm All with right. it. All right. All right, bro.
What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.